to Almighty God. Just keep clapping your hands. Give him the offering. Give him that offering. A clap offering. Clap offering. I give him a clap offering this morning. The devil wanted to raise his ugly head. But the devil was smashed down. Many left home, didn't get home this morning. Some left, they want to go to church, but they did not get there. But the devil was smashed down. I said the devil was smashed down. I said you are alive this morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Please sit down on that miracle seat of yours. It's a miracle seat because you are not going home the same this morning. <laughs> How many of you believe that? You are not going home the same way you came this morning. There's a surprise for you. I don't know. This morning, I thank God. I thank God for my bishop. I call him my bishop. Listen to me first. <laughs> yes. This morning, I listened to that song, What God put in my mind this morning. The choir preached to me this morning. This song that was sung this afternoon was a preaching to me this morning. I didn't have to continue to preach. If God reach out to you, who can bring you down? If God touch you, who can bring you down? What is your situation this morning? What is your situation this morning? What are you going through? I know God that I serve is a wonderful God. I smile when I call his name. I smile when I reach out to him. I know what he can do. If you listen to my pastor, what he said a while ago, it's a testimony. The testimony will come later. I want to say thank you to my... You think I should call him pastor? I don't call him my pastor. If my congregation in Nigeria call me daddy, everyone in the congregation is CTPM, Kawari Tony Point Ministry in Nigeria, they call me daddy. Therefore, I have somebody here that I worship with and I'm serving under him then I'll call him what? Daddy. Big Daddy. <laughs> so, Pastor Hall is my Big Daddy. Then if they call my wife Mommy, then what should they call her? Uh, what should I call her, uh, Mrs. Hall? Big uh, Mommy. So, in Africa, we know how to reverend respect to the authority. When you are a pastor, you are held to the highest extent. Respect is accorded to you. Because you are not just there because you fight not against what? Flesh and what? But the what? Sometimes when the devil wants to catch the member, they'll go after the pastor first. That is why you need to respect the pastor because God has anointed the pastor to do what? Intercede for you. I love this pastor because it's a ch this church is a prayer ministry. Where he says two is better than what? one. And a hundred is better than what? Uh-huh. But some of us have not listened to that line. What God said, he said, where two or more are gathered, in his name, is what? May God bless you. Father, I thank you and I bless your name. We're going into your word. I ask, O oh Lord, that use me, O oh Lord. Speak through me. Let me be your oracle. That life will be touched this morning. That heart will be circumcised. And so will be brought back to you. Every word, every situation that came with our people this morning, I ask, O oh Lord, at the end of this preaching, that good news will follow them home. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to say something. Repeat after me. 
But I know. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Somebody is weak. But I know. But I know. But I know. Even now. Aha, aha. Let's stop right there. I postponed the other part of it. As we go in, you will know what you are going to add to that even now. Repeat, even now. Some of us have heard this story before, the story of Lazarus, because I don't want to hold you back, because we need to close at least before one o'clock. We have a lot of food downstairs that we can eat. You know, Africans, we love to eat. And we always want to give so that uh, people can enjoy. Anywhere, there's no, when we celebrate, we give up, bring, bring food. You can see our sisters are all dressed, well dressed today. Right? Can't you see them? They are so beautiful. If I have extra money, if I have extra money now, if I have extra money now, I will bring my wife straight to the altar and say, Pastor, marry us again. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Lazarus! Mary and Martha. These were the three people converted in Bethany. Of everybody in Bethany, three people, they were friends of Jesus Christ. They were friends. But something happened. Each time Jesus Christ go to Bethany, they feed him. Something happened. You have heard the story. I don't want to be that. Lazarus got sick. He was sick. And they sent message to Jesus Christ. Who is your friend? The Bible says, Lazarus, Jesus loved. He loved this, whole, this family. But as soon as this messenger came, gave the message to Jesus Christ and said, your friend Lazarus is sick. Yeah. What happened? Jesus Christ said, go. I'll be right back. I'll be right there. Number one, one day gone, two, second day, message came back. Why are you worried? The man is dead. But before this time, Jesus told the disciples, he said, this sickness is not unto what? Death. You are not hearing me. Mm -hmm. He said, this sickness is not unto death. Let's look at the uh, 21. Verse 21 of John 11. John 11, 21. Lord, this is the story now. He said, Lord, Jesus, he said, Lord. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have not what? Hi, yeah, yeah. Because Martha believed in Jesus Christ. Even when the brother is dead, he said, what did he say? Read it again. Let's read it together. Let's read it together. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if I had been here, my brother would have not have to die. It means they still have belief in him. Do you believe Jesus Christ? Do you believe that God can come into your life tonight? Yes. This afternoon, life is going to change. Yes. I don't know about you, but I know about me. Yes. I start with my house. The devil wanted to raise his ugly head last night. My daughter went on a boat ride. At about 4 o'clock, the mother woke up. Can't find the daughter. Started panicking. I said, I turned my back on the bed. Are you hearing me now? When she started bickering. She's not home. I turned my back. 
I asked God, where is the baby? Where is my daughter? God said, he's somewhere sleeping. He's coming back home with the money. I turned to my wife. I said, come and sleep. Forget about her. She's safe. Hey, you know women. <laughs> I don't want to continue from there. <laughs> to continue from there. The devil wanted to raise his ugly head, but God was in control because I believe this one that I serve. That one up there, our Lord Jesus Christ. I am the one that boasts with his name. And many pastors, I only see my brother here, Pastor Hall, that can say the same thing. We don't go to any area to ask, how is the church going to be tomorrow morning? Many people go and look into Christo before they can go to their church. But there's nothing like that in this church. Because there's God in this church. There's healing in this church. There's God answering prayer in this church. Because we serve a living God. He said, if I know, but even now, Let's go down a little bit to verse. Let's look at number four, verse four of that. It said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be what? Glorified. Your situation. I don't know what is your situation. Whatever you are going through now. It's happening to you so that God can take his glory. Ah, you didn't hear me. Whatever situation you are going through right now, I don't care what they call it. Let it be one big sickness, say cancer. You have heard here before, cancer has been cured. Is that not? Somebody was, I think about two years ago, in a, in a, your, in a Caribbean ministry, after prayer of faith, person came and said, I went to the doctor. When Bishop prayed, he said, everything. I went to, because God was using me to speak the word. As I spoke the word, I said, there's somebody inside here. You will go and see the doctor. You will get a different report. Amen. Which report you should you believe? It's the report of Almighty God. I am glad that my sister sent out a test this morning. She asked. I asked her, she said, my bishop, you have mustard seed. I bring the mustard seed down there. I said, this mustard seed, we are going to use it. As we use this mustard seed, life is going to be transformed. We have testimony coming already. It's less than three, months, three weeks. It's about three weeks or four weeks now, right? We already started having testimony. I am glad that the pastor received a, a test this morning. And things change around. The person will give testimony. This to tell you that a prayer church can never lack. There's always a miracle in a prayer church. Because this church pray. It's not collecting money from you. If you have money, you cannot buy the treatment God will give you. I want to add to it. He said this sickness will not kill him. But for God to claim his glory. Yeah. Now let's look at, we look at 21 before. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, <laughs> if thou had been here, my brother had not died. Now let's look at 22. Come on with 22. Let's see what the 22 said. But, I know. Bet. I know. Say that. Bet. I know. Bet. I know. I say repeat it again. Bet. I know. That even now. It means he trusts whom he has. Whom Jesus is. Even now. Whatsoever. Hey. Even now. Whatsoever. What is whatsoever in your life? I try to understand, try to ask, what is the meaning of whatsoever? Yeah. Some of you are professors, I'm not a professor. 
Some of you are doctors in English, especially my, my, my daughter-in-law, PhD. I don't know what is uh, today. I don't know what he said whatsoever. Go and define it and bring it home. Whatsoever. When God, when Martha looked at Jesus, he said, mm, even now, whatsoever, if you ask your father, hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. even now, if you ask your father, he will do it. What is your situation this morning? What are you going through this morning? I don't care what you are going through, but I have somebody that I want to bring to you. Jesus is coming your way. Jesus left where he was preaching. I said I had it to Bethany. He knew that Lazarus was dead. And I said, my friends, come. Lazarus is sleeping. They knew the meaning of sleeping, that the man is dead. Some of you are asking, why are you going there now? Is it now you are going? If you are in my shoe or in Martha's shoe, you sent a message out. Four days, your friend that you feed every day that they come around your house. Say, this man, a grateful man. I sent a message to him about a few days ago. I know that he can wake my brother. He will make my brother here. But now, three, four days passed now. He's not here. What is he coming for? Is that not the question you ask? Some of you will ask that question. What is he looking for now? He's always coming to eat food. <laughs> but they did not say that. Whatsoever your condition is it health problem, pain, poverty, financial breakdown, what are you going through? Even now, Whatsoever you are going through, I tell you this afternoon, there's someone that's heading your way. I said, there's someone that is heading your way. I said, there's someone that is heading your way. I said, there is someone that is heading your way. That man is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's right there knocking. I was writing this song in Nigeria. As I was putting this song together, we were supposed to release the album so that I can bring it to the U.S. and launch it in October. But unfortunately, the devil strike. Yeah. One of my lead singers, Mrs. Egan Rowa, the husband is a superstar, a movie star in the Benin, uh, movie industry. They were just converted less than six months. We practiced the song that will go to the studio and record the, uh, the, the song. As she left there, 7 o'clock, they called. They said, Mrs. Serena was in the hospital. Why? She just left the church. The devil was trying something. <laughs> if I serve this God, that I boast with his name every time. I don't know about you. The lady husband called. I said, call daddy. Let daddy come now. If not, daddy will not meet this body. I went to the hospital. I saw the doctor. They were doing their thing. They put her together. I said, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. I traveled to somewhere about uh, 200 miles away from Benin for a wedding. At the wedding, I got a call. You better come home now. You better come home now. If not, you will lose one of your best singer. You will lose that singer. I said, is it that bad? He said, yes. I look up to heaven. It was raining. I, went, I left the congregation. I went inside the rain. I lifted my hand up. I said, if I serve you, he said, I should boast. I said, if I serve you alone, I will meet them. I entered my car, started driving for two and a half hours to Benin. As soon as I got there, the, the, the doctor has already lost faith. Have you seen, how many of you are nurse here? If you are nurse, raise up your hand if you are a nurse. When oxygen level go down below 5850, it's a critical situation. If pressure go down 90 over 40, Nawahala. Abi, 
No. Now, your pulse. If pulse go to 30, it don't break down. Abi, it's quarter to dead body. As soon as I walked in, I asked the doctor, I said, doctor, what can we do to revive this person? The doctor said, I'm tired. I've done everything possible by man and by, by his profession. There's nothing he can do. But I turned to my God. Hey! I turned to my God. So the husband was right there looking at the doctor when that doctor made that statement. The doctor was not supposed to make that statement in front of the husband. As soon as the doctor made that pronouncement, the husband fell down. Bah! Started crying. Yes. Oh, see him like this. Started crying. The sister fell down. Bah! He started crying. My oddly, that usually go with me, fell down. Bah! My friend fell down. Bah! The husband of my sister, they were with me. They were all crying. Oh, we lost somebody again in the church. I said, oh, huh? Not lie. I said, everybody get out of the room. Get out of the room. You cannot cry when Master Jesus is around me. I send them out. As soon as I send them out, I call the doctor. I said, come. Even myself, tears started coming down. I don't want to lose this person. I turned because what God said to Ezekiah. Ezekiah was supposed to die. And God sent back message. You will not die. I will give you 15 years. I referred to that and I called. I said, God, now the husband is out of here. It's between me and you. I said, God, it's not between me and you. If you let this woman die, you have killed my ministry. You gave me this ministry. You will kill this ministry. Number two, you will make this man not to believe God anymore. Hey! I said that in faith. And I don't boast. I boast with the Lord's name. I don't know about you. I told the doctor, what can we do? The doctor said nothing. I said, come back. Let's pray. I lifted my hand up. I said, I lifted my hand up. I said, God, if this woman died, they will bring disgrace to you. They will tell me, they will tell people that Omeda is not a good pastor. They will tell people that he's a fake pastor. If I'm your pastor, this woman must what? Survive. God has said it. It's not left for you it's not left for you to save this woman. The woman now, the woman that closed her eye all this while looked up, said, Daddy, are you here? I said, yes. I said, I'm here. I said, you don't worry, you won't die. He said, I know that you, since you are here, I know you won't die because I believe in your God. And the doctor looked at me and said, who is this man? I said, doctor, bring me oxygen, put back oxygen on her. They, put, they already removed everything. Let her die. I asked them, put back oxygen. They put back oxygen. I called my sister, the junior sister, to my uncle there, Dr. Harris. She's a professor in uh, anesthesia. Called her up. I said, come. I have a, a situation. This is not your own situation. I, our own situation. This woman must not die. What happened? To cut the story short, we moved the lady from uh, there on Today, I tell you, this morning, she was in church serving God. If God can do that, I don't see any situation that you are going through right now. What is your situation? Jesus is on his way. God now said, let, let's look at, let, 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 let's go to somewhere. Because of the love Jesus Christ has for these people. God himself cried, wept. Verse 35 of John 11. Jesus what? Wept. Because he saw the pain that Martha and Mary they are going through. I don't know your tr trouble this morning. I don't know what you are going through this morning. I tell you right now, there's somebody on the way. This person is Master Jesus. Open your heart. Open your house. Open your mind. Let it come in. It's going to take over your situation. Amen. When Jesus got to the point by the house, Martha went to him. Let's look at verse, uh, 30, uh, verse 38. Lord, 39. 39. 
Verse 39. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha said to Jesus, <laughs> By this time, he stinketh. Hey? By this time, why are you coming around late when he stinks? I am telling you, I don't know whether your situation is stinks or rotting. Jesus is interested in a rotting situation. Uh -uh, you didn't hear me there. I, I said you did not hear me. If your situation stinks, I am not telling you. Jesus is, is interested in that stinking situation. If God cannot change a stinking situation, then it's not God. Listen. He said even now, if there's no now, there was no past. Is that not? If there was no now, there was no past. Then there will be no future. Because he lived now, he lived yesterday, he will live forevermore. Amen. Therefore, whatever sticky situation that you are in, I tell you this afternoon, yeah, that situation is changed already. I said that situation is changed already. I tell you that situation is changed. It's reversed right now. Wherever you go, are you hearing me? It looked like this Agbada is disturbing me. Because we are in a business where we have to tell people our God. If I cannot boast of my God, then who else am I going to boast of? He said he has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of what? Boldness. Are you afraid of sickness? My sister called me and said, came up here and said, Bishop, this is what happened. That prayer we said that day, that's happened. They have changed my situation. My situation changed. The doctor gave me a report and said that kidney is free of cancer. I don't know about you this morning. If you have that sickness, if you are under my action this morning, you are listening to my voice and I'm boasting to you in the name of Almighty God, and I'm telling you that I have Jesus in me, and that one that I have in me can do wonder in your life. Yeah. I don't know about you. He said, my brother, by now, remove the stone. Why are you arguing? By now, it's thinking. What situation are you in that stinks? What? Let's turn to the, to the book of Psalm 20. Let's see. Psalm 20. We're going to look at nine. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. But we remember the name of the Lord. Of our God. We remember who? Remember who? Hey, yeah, 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 you are not following. I'll go and sit down. I'll go and sit down. You are, you are drawing me back. I want the anointing to continue to flow because somebody's going to get healed this afternoon. Somebody's going to go home with some news this afternoon. And by next Sunday, somebody's going to go to their church or come back to this church and say, We thank God for the miracle of God in my life. Then follow me. Follow me. Some trust in chariots, in horses. By what? We will remember the name of the Lord our God. Because in that situation, I remember the name of God. I remember Jesus Christ because he's a game changer. He's somebody that can change game. You might be losing. He will turn it around. Maybe Chelsea, maybe Dallas Cowboy. But I want to tell you, Dollar Cowboy might be losing, but when they call the name of the Lord, situation will change. Are you hearing me now? The same way in your life, if you think you are losing to the wickedness of the world, and I tell you, Jesus is on the, on the way. He's knocking at your door. He's telling you, open. He's telling you, believe in me. Trust me, I can do something. Right now, that you can change your life. I don't know about you. 
I don't know about you. Then let's look at the eight of it. They brought down, brought through what? They are brought down. Let's see, finish this. They are brought down and fallen. But we are risen. And what? Stand up what? Stand up what? If you know that you are risen and you stand up right, I want you to stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. You all stand up on your feet. Let me tell you now. Can trouble. Can trouble, I ask again. Have you? Can trouble have you? You can have trouble, right? But trouble cannot have you. Are you hearing me now? You can have sickness. I tell you, that sickness does not hold you. Because I have somebody that can take over that sickness. I know somebody that can take over your situation right now. Are you here now that your situation is so, is so messed up that you have lost hope? What is that hope that you have lost? What is that situation you are in this afternoon? I tell you, I don't care whom you are. But I know somebody that I'm going to introduce you to. And that man is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's going to change your situation this afternoon. I said he's going to change your situation this afternoon. He's going to change your situation this afternoon. If you believe, I say clap, 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 clap. Are you ready? Listen. Listen to me. My son... I like him. He's taking after his father already. Nothing moves me. Whatever comes in your way is temporary. Are you hearing me now? Whatever you are going through is temporary. But I have somebody that is going to change that right now. As you change that, you are going to be happy. I know that God is bringing joy to your house right now. If you claim it, raise up your hand. If you claim it, raise up your hand that God is bringing joy to your house. That God is changing your situation. I don't care your pain. Your pain is gone. He who can change things is around you right now. He's going to touch you. He touched me. He touched me. And oh, he the joy me. that floods my soul. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Go, 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 go. Oh, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me. He's touching somebody right now. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and let God touch you. Close your eyes and look at me. Because he's going to touch you right now. He Open your heart. Touch me. Open your heart. Open your heart. And Let God oh, touch your soul. Oh, yeah. the joy that flood my soul. Oh, yes. Something happened. And now. touching somebody right now. My God is touching somebody right now. If you know there's something in your life, something in your life that is giving you sleepless night. Sometimes some of us fight with pillow at night. You cry all night. The pillow is soaked before daybreak. If we have to quantify the tears that came out of your eyes more than a cup. But I'm telling you that tear will stop right now. I Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I want you to receive this healing right now. God is walking around you. Just don't let nobody touch you. Don't let nobody touch you. 
His spirit is working and is going, you are going to be healed. Whatever situation is changing right now, you are going to come back here or call the pastor or call the church home that this is what happened on Sunday. Some of you left home with tears this morning. You have returned, you are coming back, you, are, you came here, but as you are going back, that tears is dried up. You didn't hear me. Whatever tears that you were going through, that tears that started coming out of your heart this morning, I said, what happened? What is going on in my life? I tell you as you leave here this afternoon, I tell you right now, that tears is dried up. I said that tears is dried up. I said it's dried up. That pain that is in you right now, I say, that pain is, is gone. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Just lift up your hand. Father, I thank you. I bless your name. Because of whom you are. I thank you for the miracle this afternoon. I thank you for the great healing this afternoon. As we all lift up our hand this afternoon, we say, touch us, O Lord, and make us whole. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every situation that is rotting, I cancel right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every situation that is rotting, either marital, marital problem that you are going through, I cancel it right now. If you are going through divorce, I cancel right now. If you are going through, your children cannot hear you anymore. I'm canceling right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you are losing a job. I cancel it right now. Your job is restored back to you. Your job is restored back to you. Your job is restored back to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. None of you will.